Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back here to another episode of Intuitive Angling and thank you very much for joining me for today's video. I always appreciate that. And guys, today we're gonna to be having a little talk about something I've wanted to discuss a while and that is the fact about some of the spotlighters out there that are just all in with spotlighting. They use the, uh, they, they, they've got a talking point that they say, well, there's no data that proves forward-facing sonar technology is harming our fisheries. And I'm gonna tell you guys in this video why that's a bunch of BS. And we're gonna sort of get into that uh, in today's video here. Also guys, just a big thank you to everybody out there that's been helping support the channel through the various avenues we got here, man. We got the Patreon, we got the Tackle Warehouse link, Solar Bat link, subscribing to the channel. Big thank you to everybody out there that's giving back to the channel and using those links. So just wanted to send you guys a big uh, thumbs up and a big thank you on that. Okay guys, one of the things that you hear a lot from the uh, people that are addicted to forward-facing sonar, especially um, from some of the uh, few of the big mouths that fish the Bassmaster Elite Series, they basically say, oh, there's no data that bakes, backs up any of Randy's claims out there. You guys, you know why there's no data out there about that? Number one is that there's no way to collect the data. And number two is the fisheries, manage, fisheries management uh, as a whole are notoriously late to the party when it comes to changing rules and regulations out there. Now, first of all, I've heard several people say that uh, our, I've, I've heard several of the Bass Elite Series pros that, that basically try to justify uh, forward-facing sonar because it, it, because it is their umbilical cord to success. And they realize without forward-facing sonar, they wouldn't have a career in fishing and they'd have to go find another job somewhere because they couldn't compete if they had to fish like real bass fishing is meant to be. So they justify it by saying there's no data that backs up the fact that forward-facing sonar is harming our fisheries. You know what the data is, guys? You know, you know how fisheries, manager, fisheries managers collect, quote, data? Number one is they, the, the most common form is they survey anglers at the ramp to ask them, you know, how many fish they caught, how many did they throw back, what was the size of the fish. If they have any fish in the live well, they'll measure the fish. So they take information from the anglers, which is completely unreliable. There's no way to scientifically validate information that you get from somebody off of word of mouth. That's why in every courtroom scenario, the least valuable type of information is eyewitness information out there because you simply can't trust people for what they're gonna tell you. So that is not any form of legitimate data out there. And nobody can say it is because it's not. Nothing has been proved, it's hearsay, it's speculation, you know, based upon what somebody's telling you, whether it's true or not. Number two, they do some sampling, like with electroshocking, they do some gill nets, some hoop nets, to try to get some samples of fish. Guys, you can't reach, you can't even begin to touch the population of fish in a lake by those methods there. That isn't, that is like, that, is, that leaves such an incomplete picture that it's just ridiculous out there. So trying to say that the fisheries managers are collecting data and they haven't come up with any data. Number one, there's, a, there's been no aggressive programs to try to collect any data on this. Number two, since forward-facing sonar has basically just taken over fishing now for two years, a lot of them I don't even know if they're aware of it out there. They've got other things that they're dealing with. They're understaffed, that they got, they're got. under budgeted, and something like this probably goes underneath their, wet, their radar there. So from that standpoint there, when somebody tries to justify the use of spotlighting through the fact that data has not proved that it's harming it, um, there's no water to that. that. That is a complete myth with that. And e even if it was, it wouldn't make any difference because look at the data we have on cigarette smoking, guys. There, there's literally five, over 500,000 people in this country, in the United States, that die from cigarette smoking every year. It costs our health care system billions of dollars every year. The data is clear. The data is, is unrefutable. If you smoke cigarettes long enough, you're going to die from it, from heart disease or cancer or whatever like that. Yet it is still legal to go buy cigarettes out there um, simply because there's money in it. The, the tobacco industry lobbies members of Congress to basically vote against anything that's gonna harm their interests. Sort of the same scenario you see with forward-facing sonar out there. As long as forward-facing sonar and the electronic companies are subsidizing the tournament organizations, 
don't expect anything to change out there. Now we've heard a bunch of rumors out there that that Bassmaster and I don't maybe MLF they're they're monitoring you know what this is and they're going to make maybe a decision on some type of limitations. Guys, don't hold your breath on there because if they come back with this and they say, okay, we're only going to, you're not going to be able to have five live scope transducers. You're still, you can only have one live scope transducer. That ain't doing anything because you're still, you're still spotlighting. It doesn't matter if you have one or five, you're still spotlighting the bass. So if Bassmaster tries to make some type of, of a uh, rule adjustment to appease a bunch of the members are losing because they don't want to watch forward facing sonar on the bass masters that's nothing <laughs> that, that that's not helping the situation out whatsoever with that so from the standpoint when you're talking about data and trying to determine policy and rules and regulations through data out there um there's no, nothing there, there's nothing out there that can verify what you're talking about. It's basically a matter of common sense. Since it's impossible to collect the data right now that determines if, a fit, if forward facing sonar or the advancing technology is harming fisheries out there, the thing that you have to rely on is just common sense. You know, people know out there, if, if we're creating this technology that is making it in, literally impossible for any fish in the lake to hide, I don't care if the fish is living in two foot of water or a hundred foot of water, we have technology and that technology is advancing to where there's no way that the fish can hide. And then this technology is being utilized by not only the majority of tournament anglers, but it's getting utilized by a, a growing number of just recreational people that go fishing to keep fish to eat. If, if you can't see the fact that as this technology becomes more available and expands in its ability to find every fish in the lake, that it's not going to have some comp, some type of a impact on our fisheries, you're living in a denial of reality. And one of the weakest arguments I've ever heard from one of the biggest big mouth bass pros on the elite series out there is they go back there and say, well, you can't say that the weights are down because look at the weights, you know, now versus the weights 30 years ago before forward-facing sonar. That's, our weights are even equal to or greater. That's not, that, that doesn't mean anything whatsoever because when you're talking about the advances in not only electronic technology, but rod and reel technology, bait technology, boat and motor technology, when you're talking about these huge advances in technology that has allowed people to find every single fish in the lake that creates an illusion that the fishing is equal to or better than it was 30 years ago. Here's the only way that you can actually get a, a good gauge on that. If you compare like tournament weights in 1990 versus 2024, go back to 1990 and look at the technology anglers had then. They had two flashers on the boat, they had paper maps, they didn't have GPS, they had, they had a fraction of the equipment we had now. They have 25 less percent or 75 percent less tackle. There wasn't any innovative technology. It was basically you fished a crankbait, a spinnerbait, a jig, a plastic worm, and that was it. There wasn't any swim baits other than little curly tail grubs weren't even around. So fast forward to 2024. If you take the same equipment that was in a Bass Pro's boat in 1990. Two, two flashers, paper graph or paper maps, no no GPS or anything like that. Give them the Model A crankbaits, a black and blue jig, a half ounce Stanley spinner bait. You tell them to go fish. You look what the weights would be now. The weights would be a fraction of what they are in regular tournament competition. So you can't compare the tournament weights in 2024 with the technology advances we have versus the weights from 1990. That's absolutely ridiculous. That's there. Any anybody that has any common sense can see the connection with that. So the point is with this fact, guys, is when people try to justify their lifeline of spotlighting through the fact that the data doesn't support it, that is because there is no data, and that's because it's next to impossible to formulate the type of data that would be needed to correctly assess this. Because it's not only data on fisheries populations; it's data on equipment and technology in other areas besides electronic technology. So um, don't fall for it, man, don't fall for it. I realize, you know, 
the more that I'm fishing tournaments now, the, there's a segment of the population that is going to fight tooth and nail to keep this technology legal because simply it totally, it, it, it's, it's a matter of, a, of making or breaking their career. There is an, an increasing number of anglers out there. I would put it at over 50% on the Bassmaster Elite Series turn, tournaments now that if forward-facing sonar was taken away from them, they couldn't catch anything. They would be, they, they couldn't even compete in a club tournament, let alone the Bassmaster Elite Series because that is their game. So they realize their very survival is dependent upon undermining um, any type of movement against forward-facing sonar. And that's what they're doing out there. Don't believe it. It's not true. It's propaganda. So anyway, guys, I just wanted to thank everybody that is, uh, is taking up the role of being the adult in the room with this argument, fighting a good fight. You're on the right side of the history if you're against forward-facing sonar. Um, in the big picture down the road, you're, you know, in another 25 years from now, everybody out there that is against forward-facing sonar is going to be seen as the biggest heroes in the sport. And everybody that tried to maintain the status quo and grow technology and push forward-facing sonar into the public is going to be looked at as the biggest villains in the history of fishing by what we've done to the fishery. So just decide what side of history you want to be on because that's basically, you know, it's cut and dried with that. So... Anyway, thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll talk later. See you.